All right, starting things off at the 2.5, I'm in for 900, and in this first hand, I'm on the button with pocket fives, and I raise to 25 after under the gun and low jack limp. They both call, and we go three ways to ace ace 10 with a diamond draw. Checks to me, and I fire C bet of 25. Only under the gun calls, and we go to a turn of a deuce of spades putting up another flush draw. Under the gun checks, and I don't expect an ace to fold, but in the hopes of getting a 10 to fold, or get value and deny against draws, I continue with the aggression for 90. He calls once again, so that's concerning, and we go to a river of a king of spades. Now my opponent decides to lead for 200. A part of me wants to get after it to rep ace king since he theoretically shouldn't have that hand, but I'm not sure that I can get him to fold an ace, so I just let this one go. Shortly after, hijack raises to 15, and I 3-bet to 50 from the cutoff with 7-8 of clubs. Hijack calls, and we take a flop heads up, which comes 10-8-6 with yet again another diamond draw. Hijack checks, and with slightly disguised coverage on this board, I check back. Force becomes a deuce of clubs, and hijack checks again. Feels like a good spot to go for a bet, so I fire 65. Hijack puts in the check raise to 180. A ton of hands you can have here, some of which are ahead, such as a 10 and some over pairs, but perhaps he's just trying to pounce on what looked like weakness when I check back the flop. I've got a good hand to take a river, so I put in the call. Fifth Street comes a king of hearts, so not the ideal card as some of his bluffs on the turn now make top pair. When he checks it though, I think I've got enough showdown value to win this one some of the time, so I check back. And it turns out it's one of those times as my opponent tables ace-queen offsuit. I then upgrade to a premium in the big blind with pocket kings, and after under the gun raises to 20 and hijack calls, I put in the re-raise to 100. Only under the gun calls, and we go heads up to queen 10-4 with two spades and a diamond. I see bet 80, and under the gun puts in a raise of 300 with about 500 back. Ranges should be tight given that it's big blind versus under the gun, and while I am behind against sets and two pair, I am ahead of certain hands like ace queen and various draws. That in mind I put in the call, and the turn connects the board a bit more as the jack of hearts rolls off. I check, and my opponent jams for 495. Not loving it, but I call, and we go to a river of a five of clubs, so a good blank, and my assumption about ranges being tight is way off as my opponent shows the winning hand, Jack four of spades for two pair. So yeah, I was in good shape on the flop, but he was able to turn the table and get the full double up. I then pick up a pocket pair again, this time sevens from the cutoff, and after three limps, I raise a 35. I pick up four callers and we go heavily multi-way to ace a6 rainbow, checks to me, and I fire a c-bit of 70. Small blind calls, middle position and low jack fold, and then hijack jams for 265, so it's another 195 if I want to call. Not a huge price given the size of the pot, but it feels optimistic to think that my opponent is doing this with a six or worse. So unfortunately I fold, and the small blind folds as well. So yeah, a bit of a bumpy ride, but perhaps the straddle can smooth things over. Out of the gun puts out a live 10, and it folds him in the small blind with queen eight of clubs, and I raise to 35. Only the straddler calls, and I flop a flush draw in six three deuce, all black. I continue for 25, and the straddler calls. Turn up the 10 of hearts, I check unimproved, and Straddler takes the green light and bets 85. Not ready to let this one go, I put in the call, and Fifth Street comes a board pairing due, so I don't get there. I check just giving up, and the Straddler decides to put out another bet, this time 175. As far as hand strength, with just queen high, this is typically a fold, but I do think it over in terms of what my opponent is trying to represent. If he has a six or 10, he could be going for thin value against ace highs, but a six or 10 may also just check back the river to show down. He could have a mix of flush draws as well in which a hero call with my hand beats some of those hands, but if I call and he shows ace or king high, that would be pretty painful. All that in mind, I decided to go for what I think is one of the hardest moves to execute in No Limit Hold'em, and that's the check raise river bluff. Feels like a good spot to try it here since I don't think my opponent's hand is too strong, and I can reasonably represent tens plus for value given the river board pair. I make it 475, and under the gun fairly quickly lets it go. Nice to get this one through. I then move over to a new 510 game and buy him for 2500. In the first notable hand, I have King 10 of spades on the button. There's a middle position call and a cutoff raise to 40. I have three bet to 125 and only cutoff calls. We go heads up to 976, all red. So not the best flop, but I do have a gutter. Cutoff checks and I check back. Turn comes a queen of spades giving me a double gutter. Cutoff checks again and I can certainly bet to rep a queen but I check back as I'm still feeling out the table. River rolls off a nice card. It's a jack of hearts giving me the nut straight. Cutoff decides to bet 100 this time, and although front door hearts do complete, I think it's a little too sharpened to just flat a one-third pot bet, 
so I raise to 360. My opponent doesn't think too long and makes a disciplined lay down. I then pick up another suit at Broadway, this time ace track of diamonds from the hijack, and I race a 35. Cut off to my left, three bets to 105. Small blind cold calls, and this one feels pretty close between four betting and flatting, and out for the ladder. We go three ways to a flop of ace 10 10, all black. Checks and flow to the cutoff, and he fires a down C bet of 105. Small blind folds, and this already feels like a trouble situation, but I call. Turn comes the queen of diamonds, so I pick up a gutter. I check again, and cut off fires again, this time for 325. All options on the table with folding probably being the best option, but with my opponent possibly having a club draw, I decide to speculate for one more street. River rolls off a blank six of diamonds. I check, and this time cutoff checks back. I turn it over, and it's no good as cutoff is ace king of spades. Shortly after I pick up the hand that I wish I had last hand, I've got ace 10 of diamonds from the small blind, and after under the gun raises the 35, I three bet to 140, and he calls. We go heads up to queen 5-3, all red and giving me backdoor possibilities. I decide to check this one, and under gun checks back. Four three comes to eight of clubs, and given that my opponent didn't stab the flop, it seems like he doesn't have much. In an effort to protect ace high though, I bet 140, and he pretty quickly folds. Continuing with the trend of suited aces, I'm dealt ace seven of hearts in the cutoff, and after low jack limps, I raise to 45. Small blind and low jack call, and we take a flop three ways, which comes 9-7 deuce rainbow giving me middle pair and backdoor hearts. Checks to me, I see bet 60, and only small blind calls. Heads up to a turn of a king of diamonds. Small blind checks, and although this should be a good card for me, I decide to check back. River comes eight of clubs, putting up another over to my pair, and this time small blind leads for 200. I likely don't have the best hand, and turning it into a bluff doesn't seem attractive in this spot, given a variety of two pair plus holdings. That in mind, I fold. We then play shorthanded and erase a 35 from under the gun one with a premium, pocket queens. Cut off in big blind call, and the flop comes 7-5-4 rainbow, so not the best flop for queens. Big blind checks, I check, and cut off fire 65. Big blind calls, I call, and we go to a miracle queen of hearts on the turn, giving me the third nuts. Action checks again to the cutoff, and he bets 275. Big blind folds, and it's an interesting spot with top set. Generally speaking, when you have a strong hand, you of course want to pile money into the pot. That said, I don't have very many check raise bluffs on this board, so I decided to proceed deceptively and just flat. Definitely a risky play since there are some bad rivers, so don't get me wrong as I can definitely get behind a raise here, but after I call, the river comes the eight of diamonds, so not the best card. I check with the intention to call most bets, but cutoff checks back, which confirms that my hand is good. Shorthanded once again, I pick up my favorite hand, 5-6 suited, this time in spades. I race a 35 from under the gun and button 3 bets to 115. I call and we take a flop heads up which comes queen 3 deuce rainbow giving me a gutter and a backdoor flush draw. I check call button c bet of 125 and we're off to a turn which comes a 4 of spades giving me the nut shot. I check again and button continues the aggression for 280 with about 1k back. Another interesting spot in terms of whether to call or raise. The merits of calling is that there aren't too many rivers that are bad, so I can underwrap here and hope to get the rest on the river. On the flip side, the merits of raising is that my opponent may not be able to get away from a queen or better, since there are draws available on this board, such as spades, 4-5 suited, pocket fives, pocket sixes. I end up settling on a raise, and with him having 1k back, I think only one sizing makes sense, so I rip. And after a bit of deliberation, he decides to fold. Don't get the max, unfortunately, but always nice to scoop one with my favorite hand. Hoping to continue the momentum, I then get moved to the main game in which we are playing with the straddle on and I've got king eight of hearts on the button. An aggressive opponent who is possibly the best player at the table raises 60 from the cutoff. I offer a light three bet to 200, small blind cold calls, and that spells trouble as an aggressive opponent on the cutoff should be incentivized to four bet. And that is what he does is he makes it 750. Nice play by the cutoff as I fold, as does the small blind. With raising light not working, I revert back to the basics as I pick up aces in the cutoff and raise to 70. An aggressive opponent in the straddle defends, and we go heads up to jack 9-7 rainbow. Straddler checks, and given that this is a board that the straddler can connect hard with, I like checking back here on occasion, particularly against aggressive opponents in an effort to neutralize the moves and plays that they can make. The turn rolls off the knight of diamonds pairing the board and putting up backdoor diamonds. Pretty good card overall, 
and the straddler decides to bet 125. With the variety of draws that we can both have, I decided to put in a raise at 325. I'll sometimes run into a 9, but there are plenty of other weaker hands that can continue, but it looks like the straddler doesn't have much as he folds. I then get involved in a pretty weird hand when I'm in the big blind with ace deuce of clubs. There's a middle position call, low jack raises to 100, button calls, and although I'm incentivized to squeeze at some frequency, I settle on the passive route and just flat. Straddler and middle position also call, and we go five ways to 443 rainbow giving me a wheel draw. Checks in the initial raiser in the low jack, and he fires a down C bet of 125. Only I call, and we're off to a turn of a jack of hearts. I check, and this time Lojack fires 420. Pretty ironic amount as this particular opponent has been leaving the table regularly to get his head right. Nevertheless, good bet by him, and he takes this one down. Hand immediately after, I play one of the bigger hands of the session, but I unfortunately don't have footage or detailed notes as I was jotting down the notes from the ace deuce hand. To summarize though, I end up winning a 2k pot with king eight of diamonds versus queen nine of diamonds when I flush over a flush my opponent on a paired board. I didn't play that one great and likely missed out on some value as I took a passive line, but a win's a win. I then upgrade each of my cards by one pip as I've got ace nine of clubs and I race to 60 from middle position. Low jack, high jack, and the straddler call, and we go four ways to queen seven seven rainbow. Action checks through, and I pick up the nut flush draw on the turn as it comes to five of clubs. Straddler checks, and this time I fire 125. Low jack and high jack fold, and the straddler puts in a check raise at 325. Crappy spot as the straddler seems to be a tighter player and should be weighted towards value with the seven given his position and the fact that I have one of the main draws. I could be drawing dead occasionally, but I proceed with the call. I'm unimproved on the 10 of hearts on the river, and after Straddler bets 500, that puts an end to this one. Shortly after, I pick up Ace King of Spades from under the gun and race to 60. With a boatload of callers, we take a flat five ways, which comes Queen 8, 5, Rainbow, giving me backdoor nut possibilities. After a big line of Straddler check, I decide to check, and it gets to the hijack who bets 150. Big line folds, straddler calls, and I'm presented with an interesting spot. I settle on a raise to 525 as my read on the situation is that the hijack better has a queen and the straddle has a more speculative hand like middle pair or a draw. With my raise, I'm blatantly trying to make it look like I have aces or kings to just try and take the pot down here, but my hand is also nice for barreling if called. Hijack tanks a bit and folds and the straddle also tanks and calls. We go heads up to an eight of spades on fourth street pairing the board and giving me the nut flush draw. And this is where the hand takes an even more interesting turn. After Straddler checks, I decide not to barrel and check back. My reason, although not fully sound, is that I think the hijack bet folded a queen on the flop. So that in mind, I feel like the Straddler is continuing with some eights and straight draws like Jack-10, Jack-9, 10-9, and 6-7. There's of course merit to betting to deny against straight draws, but my opponent is very good and could leverage this spot via a check race to make me guess if he has an eight. Long story short, I check and the river becomes a king of diamonds. Straddler checks, and with kings and eights, the conventional thought is to bet for value, but per my assessment on the turn, I don't see a target that'll call, so I check back. He announces that he missed, and definitely not my proudest moment as I play this hand extremely weird, but happy to take it down. In orbit later, I get dealt spades again, this time with eight nine on the button. There's a cutoff raise of 60, and unlike last time when I three bet him with king eight suited, I opt for a call this time to mix it up. Small blind and straddler also call, and we go four ways to 10 7 4, all black giving me open ended and backdoor spades. Action checks to me, and looking at just realizing the spot, I check back. Turn comes the king of diamonds, so I don't get there, and small blind leads for 225. Straddler folds, and cutoff raises to 700. I fold, and small blind calls. They go heads up to a river, which comes to eight of hearts, and small blind reclaims the aggression through a bet of 1700. Cutoff tanks a bit and ends up folding and saying that he had pocket kings. And I actually believe him. Wrapping things up at Thunder Valley, I look to make lightning strike twice and win with my favorite hand again. This time with diamonds and I raise a 60 from the hijack and get calls from the button and straddler. We take a flop three ways, which comes king six three, giving me a little bit of everything. After straddler and button check, I see bet 60 and both players call. We continue three ways to a turn of a deuce of diamonds. So the run good continues with this hand, checks to me, and this time I fire 250. I face no resistance as both players fold. All right, just closing things out here from the Sacramento area. Just checked out of my hotel here at the Lake Natoma Inn in Folsom. Uh, as far as yesterday's session goes, I played 
four hours in the tournament, busted that, so I lost $400. Then I hopped into the 2-5, got in that game for a total of 1,800, and took that nasty beat against the Jack-4 suited and lost 515 in that one. And then hopped over to the 510, bought in for 3,000, uh, took some weird spots in certain situations, mainly uh, the Ace-King of Spades hand and not getting max value when I had flush over flush, but ended up booking a win in that game for 1,920. So the overall math is up a little bit over 1,000, I think 1,005. Um, so yeah, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Appreciate you guys continuing to support the channel, liking, commenting, subscribing. Might put in another session today. Um, not sure where yet, but we'll likely vlog it if I do. If not, then the next vlog you'll see will be from the Ace and Vine meetup game. And with that, see you in the next video.